Sophie is not the only girl with her eye on the goalposts. These grapes here, they're ready to be picked. Police are investigating a possible homicide. They're expecting it to fill completely up later today. It's more than just the slot machines and gambling. This could happen to you either on the water or on the road. Now the snow plows, they have been through. Each child on the North Pole Express receives a magic gift from Santa. Hello everyone, I'm Marielle Carbone. Thanks for joining me for this week's To Do. Now this White House you see behind me, it's a regular house now, but just two years ago it was a recovery house. The residents there working to stay sober. But the problem, recovery houses aren't regulated by the state, a fact that may have led to the death of a former resident. It's bittersweet for Alba Herrera to show off her son, Nick Rhodes. She's a proud mother. But talking about what happened to him on February 12th, 2014, is not easy. He hugs me and he says, I love you. And he hadn't said that in so long. Those were the last words she heard from her son. The next morning, he was dead. A heroin overdose in her Middletown apartment. No one told her that just the day before, Nick had been kicked out of the drug recovery house he lived in in Lambertville. Nick was using again, leaving her asking, And you didn't call me? But no one had to because recovery houses aren't regulated. That's changed. The Nick Rhodes Law, under it, unless a recovery house resident withholds consent, an emergency contact must be called if they're evicted or relapse. It was signed into state law by Governor Chris Christie earlier this year and written by Assemblyman Raj McHergie, who saw the flaw in the system. Its intention, to provide support for an addict during a potentially life-threatening time. Um, so that they have the support of the f and family environs when they most need it. But the new law is largely seen as symbolic because the state of New Jersey has no official definition of what a recovery house even is. For Herrera, though, it's a move in the right direction. That's just the first step. That's just to get the ball rolling and to put sober living um, the issue out there to bring awareness to it. A topic if brought to light sooner, Alba Herrera believes may have saved her son. Reporting from Lambertville, I'm Marielle Carbone. Kicking her way onto the football field. That's what 13-year-old Sophia Kane plans to do. And why shouldn't a girl play football? We've seen girls for hockey, for, you know, baseball or basketball, anything. In a world of Carly Lloyd's and Ronda Rousey's, the Tamanad 8th graders' ambitions are no surprise. Females are breaking into the sport across the country. It's even less of a surprise for her father, Kevin Kane, who says his daughter is always... Taking risk with athletic stuff. She's a, she's a really good athlete. The two started kicking behind their house, and when the first kick was around 40 yards, they moved to a full football field. Once we got on the football field, it really started to click with me, you know, what to do like how it goes on. Having nearly a decade of soccer under her belt, Sophia says a lot of the same skills translate into this, like striking the ball. But the exhilaration, it's different. Pressure's on, definitely, when you're a kicker. I feel like a lot would work up to that moment. That's one of the biggest draws for Sophia, that challenge and that pressure. Sophia and her dad plan to keep practicing and get one-on-one -on -one coaching for the fall. That's when she'll go out for the Central Bucks South freshman team, where Kane says... If she's the best kicker on the field, then she should get a chance. If she's not, then she shouldn't. If that's, that's that cut and dry. And that's all Sophia wants, a fair shot at reaching her goal. Reporting from Jamison, I'm Marielle Carbone.